Hello everyone and welcome back to another Exo Heroes video. Today we're back with another Faded tier list and today we're going to be talking about Faded Chaos Heroes. And before we get into that, why don't we start by defining our rating system from S rank to F rank. So S rank heroes are consistently top tier across all facets of the game or game changingly strong at one specific role. They're able to unleash their full potential without relying on synergies while also providing significant value and synergies to other heroes. A is just a step below S and they're above average across all areas of the game or top tier in one facet of the game. Now these heroes can sometimes rely on synergies to, to get to this rank and have potential S tier depending on which synergy it is and they provide value all throughout the game. B and C it's mediocre and below average for most areas of the game, situationally top tier. They do depend on synergies to become useful and unleash that full potential like we talked about. They should be useful in the early to mid game, but as you move into the late game and pull better heroes, they'll kind of fall out of your roster. D and F, this is pretty self-explanatory. They're poor at most areas of the game and easily interchangeable with other heroes. And even throughout the early to mid game, you're probably going to be shuffling them in and out of your roster as needed. F rank is <laughs> F rank is reserved for heroes that are really just not not even worth calling heroes. They're just fodder for rerolling or you know selling them for gold. So <laughs> hopefully we don't run into any of those. But uh, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so yeah, I think looking at the faded chaos heroes, one thing that jumped out to me is most of them are pretty good, but there's a clear upper echelon of chaos heroes here. Right, I think there's six of them, and the bottom three is nowhere close as the top three that we're looking at. And one interesting thing about it is, I feel like the Fated Chaos heroes are very kind of PvP-oriented heroes. A lot of them are great in that area, which we'll look at. But why don't we start with the bottom one? So I know like, both of us, we have on our tier list here, ranked Valentina and Baelish towards the bottom end of this whole list. And I'm a little bit higher on Valentina than you, because I, I see you put Baelish at number 5 instead of Valentina. Right. So why don't you talk a little bit about why you think Baelish is better than Valentina. Right, so for me personally, I think that Baelish, his damage is higher, specifically on A2 with the long dot. It lasts 5 turns, it does a lot of damage per turn, and he has the Dragon Raid utility, which Valentina does not provide. And he also has a Fate Core, which gives him this sort of extra boost because he's a first guardian fate core so he's got the great one passive he's got the dragon blood passive and that's just like generally very useful if we're talking about his potential i think that puts him a little bit higher as well as him being useful for the darkness days for dragon mm -hmm. raid because he's got the dots so we could break guardian sure. stones five ticks that's five stones right so i just think that he specializes in one area and if you get his fc he is definitely more of a generalist and can excel in more parts of the game, which is why I put him B rank, but above Valentina. I see. Yeah, I have both of them in B rank as well. What I like about Valentina, and the reason why I put her higher than Baelish, is I think she just brings a little bit more utility than Baelish, right? If we're only looking at the Baelish basic skills, both of them are AoE dots, or I think or, A1, no, A one, A yeah, one is A2 AoE, is A2 A two is just single target, but both of them are dots. In a way, very straightforward. A lot of his damage are coming through kind of damage over time. So I really don't think he brings too much. Sure, you know, his Fate Core with First Guardian does bring a little bit of added utility through the shielding and counterattack. But I think even among the First Guardian lineup, I think it's probably the weakest of the bunch. I think obviously Rira, Maggie, Zeon, um, Zeon. like I, I rank all of those before him. So. I really don't think his base kit offers too much. And I think among the first Guardian Fate cores, if you have someone else, you probably have the other character in his place instead. With Valentina, what I do like about it is the fact that she does bring a little bit more utility on top of her dot damage. So both of her skills, A1 and A2, will allow her to synergize with Shufraken and then add a 10 mana mana burn. And that's quite substantial because 10 mana Right, essentially erases all of your mana reserve. So that's substantial when it comes to being able to lock down one single target, especially in PvP situations when you want to focus down that one backline threat. So you're able to use that and just kind of nullify their effectiveness completely. 
Obviously, that's dependent on her partnering up with Shufrakim, but I think when you have that partnership going, that's quite strong. So, I mean, I, I agree with all of your points, specifically the sort of divide between the two. Baelish is obviously more damage focused, Valentina is more synergy focused. So, I just want to bring up some parallels. In both of our arguments for why one is better than the other, we talk about their potential, right? Valentina's true potential is her synergy with Shufrakin, and Baelish is his fate core, right? Without those, they're both similar, sure. and then I think that it really depends more on your specific comp. Like, do you need the utility? Do you need a silence? Do you need, you know, that sort of threat control, like that sort of crowd control? Then obviously bring yeah. Valentina. If you need some more damage, then bring Baelish. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um, yeah, they're both pretty even. Yeah. So why don't we go ahead now and we could talk about our next hero, which is Jinai. Sure. And actually, I just want to briefly touch on Valentina. Okay. Um, one other thing is that... You know, we do know that she is part of the Summerfest lineup. She is. So she is going to get a fake core. So that's something <laughs> to keep in mind, right? Like even though she doesn't have one right now, but we know with the Summerfest, you know, that fake core can be interesting. And one thing I want to bring up is Summerfest has this ice shower passive. Right. Which allows you to kind of to kind of have this um, CC when you attack. And I wanna test it out once I have Valentina is whether her dot damage over time, each time will be able to proc. Mm. You know, that, that would be interesting because if it does, you know, that can be a quite substantial CC for, you know, six, seven turns. But without it, obviously, you know, the Ice Shower passive only lasts three turns, which is relatively short. So it's something to watch out for, but just want to point that out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Valentina is coming out along with the other Summer Festa heroes. Yeah. So we have videos of the, the two currently out, Dagus and... Who was the first one? Scarlet. Scarlet. So if you guys want to check those out, yeah. we've got some more info on those. Yeah. But for now, yeah. Jinai. Sure. Yeah, and I think Jinai, Baelish, Valentina are all very similar in terms of they are all kind of a dot damage focus, right? And by dot, we mean, you know, damage over time. So all of their skills have that component. Jinai has both of her skill doing AoE dot damage. So that's one thing that's unique about her. Um, and also, she is one of the five heroes in this game that has a leadership skill, which is Charm. That's unique to her, which, in my opinion, that's why I put her slightly above Valentina and Baelish. Because I do think that Charm passive is quite useful, and it's very consistent. Because what it does is allow her to put this Charm debuff on any hero that has lower attack than her, and slow their attack speed by 30. Which is pretty big. Yeah, that's about a tier. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a tier. So, And that's something can be applied very consistently, whether it's in PvE situations or it's in PvP situations. So that's why I think, you know, regardless of how her other skills kind of looks, this skill alone makes her slightly above Valentina and Baelish. But I do want to point out that Jinai doesn't have the highest attack in the game. So this skill wouldn't work on some of the higher kind of attack heroes, which are also the target that you kind of want to slow the most. So I guess that's one thing to keep in mind. But otherwise, um, very similar to Valentina and Baelish, but I think her leader skill really separates her a little bit. Right. I mean, for me, if we were to break down the grading scale like a little bit more and make it more granular, Jinai is more of like a B plus or maybe an A minus for me, right? in that she's just kind of straddling that line there where I think that at her base kit, if you forget about her leader skill, is, is just like C. It's just solid, it's normal, nothing too crazy about it. But again, because she provides that additional utility to other heroes and doesn't rely on synergies herself, I think that is sort of what pushed her up to this like upper B rank here above um, Baelish and Valentina. Now, unfortunately, the two heroes that she does have synergy with through her leader skill, um, Jin and Shell, Shell I never ever see. Like we don't have a Shell and I, I rarely see Shells in anyone else's comp because I think that the meta is just not like in a good place for that hero right now. So really it's just Jin. Jin comes with, I believe it's a silence for maybe two or three turns. Yeah. Which is good, but again, given Jin's play style of like executing a hero and then moving on to the next guy, maybe not the most useful with the rest of his kids. Exactly. And you bring up an interesting point regarding Jinai not having the highest attack, and so maybe, especially in PvP situations, not getting the charm passive off on those priority targets. But she will get it off on who? Defenders, right? Yeah. Defenders and other supports. Right. And now the thing is, I think that because you they're already slow and you lower their speed even more, 
it sort of makes the frontline much less of a threat, especially if they have someone like Garf, Ulum, Shufrakin, who are pretty heavy hitters. Yeah. Then, you know, you could largely ignore the front line and then focus the back line. So yeah. she still opens up vulnerabilities in the oh, team yeah, without sure. directly for debuffing sure. people. Yeah. And I think the one last thing I want to point out, Jinai, is both of her skills are AoE and they're AoE dot damage. And I think in today's game, and this is less of an issue about Jina as a character, more about the issue that is related to the game, <laughs> right? Is that you know we're in a very kind of first guardian heavy meta at the moment, mm -hmm. and when you have AOE, when both of your skills are AOE, you put yourself at risk of getting countered way too often. So I actually like heroes that has one AOE or one one single AOE target. and one single target. So right. you have that flexibility of who you want to choose to target and when you want to use your AoE skill, but G9 doesn't have that. Both of her skills are AoE. And, and they're dots. And they're dots. Yeah. So whenever that procs, you know, it also can trigger the counter mm -hmm. or the rest passive from the opponent's team. So that's something to really watch out for. If any one of you guys wants to use G9, beware of that because she can easily kill herself. And just the rest by... of your team. Yeah, so be very, very careful about that. But with that being said, I think now we can transition into the upper echelon of this tier list which is Jean and Baraka, and then eventually Rira. So let's start with Jean and Baraka. We talked about these two characters quite extensively, and it's really hard to separate them because they're so similar in terms of their playstyle and their role. Why don't you start us off with Jean? Okay, so Jin, if you guys watched our Hero Spotlight, you'll know... <laughs> I mean, he's just like the assassin, right? You look at his, his visuals, you see his kit, and you understand exactly what this guy is supposed to do. And I think that he does a decent job at this, He's a hero that's very strong, especially like you mentioned earlier, um, geared more towards PvP. But the problem with that is that he's also very selfish, right? On his own, he provides no utility at all. It's only damage. He's got nothing to help his team, no mana generation or anything, right? The problem there is he's, in my opinion, and, and you can see on the tier list here, we, we both put Baraka a, a little bit above. And that's because I personally don't feel like he's as effective as Baraka in fulfilling that assassin role, and he doesn't provide utility for his team unless he has Jinai, which, you know, we talked about some of her PvP right. shortcomings earlier. And so I think that's part of the issue here. Those are, to me, his main weaknesses. Now, does that make him a bad hero? Absolutely not. He's A rank, and he was one of the first faded heroes that we started with. He is in, in the, the first faded hero we started out Right, with. in the game, and we've you know, kept him consistently in the roster. Yeah. So, you know, he's definitely someone worth building if you're just picking up the game. But I think that, you know, for more seasoned players, for more senior players who have been around, pulled other heroes, um, you know, he's worth taking a look at and evaluating his place in your team. Yeah. I mean, I, I absolutely agree. I think Baraka fulfills the same role and does it just a little bit better. Especially if you look at his ability to kind of function as a mana battery when paired with Rachel. Mm -hmm. And we know Rachel typically have you know mana issues with high cost A2 so I think that combination and also the fact that Baraka has the first guardian fake core as well I think all those things just puts him a little bit above Jin but I have to say one thing about Jin though I do think in the perfect scenario and this is something that I have been wanting to try out for quite a while that I think in the perfect scenario Jin can be very very deadly and definitely in my opinion have a higher ceiling than Baraka and that is if you have multiple Banga fake cores and able to form a functional team with Jane and a couple of other um, those hamster fake cores with him. Because one thing about Jane's fake core is the hard strike passive is really, really strong. Yes. But it does require setup. And one thing about it is it can proc on other allies with the hard strike passive. So you don't have to be the one who's damaging the opponent in order to proc and level up your heart strike from level 1 to level 2 to level 3. So it really benefits if you have multiple fake core heroes that have the heart strike, which all of them are the Banga heroes. So in my opinion, if you can somehow form a team <laughs> with multiple of them, then I think Jin's true potential can be unleashed at that point. And I think that is a very deadly come, especially what I've been thinking is I really want to have, you know, a fake core Tantalo, maybe a fake core Adams to pair with fake core Jin, and then have maybe two first guardian heroes, one in the front line, one in the back line. <laughs> so whenever you get attacked, not only do you get a shield from the first guardian, everyone also counters with Wrath and able to level up the Heart Strike, Heart Strike passive. I think that would be a really, really unique team come to try out and see if it works. 
And I think there's a lot of potential there. But obviously, like I, I'm sure you guys are thinking right now, you need okay, you need two fake core, first guardian fake core heroes. Yeah, and one, you need, one in the front line, one in the back line. <laughs> like, like it, it takes incredible setup. But I think it does offer kind of a breath of fresh air in terms of you know what we're seeing consistently in PvP situations. But yeah, like I would say, if you have a typical Baraka and a regular Jin, I would go with Baraka. But if you do have the fake core of Jin. Definitely give it a try and see if it works out for you. I think you'd be really interesting. Right. I mean, I'm totally with you on the base models, right? If you have base Jin, base Baraka, I would go with Baraka as well. And with the fake core, because Baraka has two fake cores, right? He's right. got the Awakening and then he's got First Guardian. For me, if I were to rate all three of them, like Jin's and then both of Baraka's, it would go Awakening Baraka, First Guardian's Baraka, and then Hamster Jin. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, like you said, hard strike passive is just too insane. It's like a ticking time bomb in PvP. Yeah. Like you just hit them like two or three turns, and basically anyone will die. Like it does not matter what their defense is, what their HP is, it, yeah. they're just gone. And that's just like it's honestly, I think, a better passive than first guardian. Again, depending on the comp, you right. these like you said, they require a lot of setup. Yeah. And I think that even with the fate core, that's why they're both a rank because they do need some support. They do need some Absolutely, synergies in yeah. order to really work. Unlike our top tier hero, and in our opinion, the best chaos hero, potentially with Fate Core, one of the best heroes in the game currently. Oh, for sure. And that's uh, our girl Rira. Yeah. Yeah, I think Rira today is probably up there with Bathory as one of maybe the best two heroes in the game. And I think when you look at the top tier PvP, Rira is ever present in every single Com lineup. Yeah. And it's really about her ability to do damage. I think she is the premier DPS in the game at this point. Even without Bathory, she is very, very good in terms of her ability to put out damage. Obviously, one of her skills has the piercing damage, allows her to ignore 30% of the opponent's defense. Um, her base damage is very good. And obviously, she comes with First Guardian Fate Core as well. And that allows her to a little bit more sustainability through the shielding, ability to counter. As well as on top of all that, she gets the Guardian, Guardian Star. Star passive, which increases her speed by 32. Yep. Right? And then it allows her to heal herself up when she gets to lower HP, but obviously that requires um, Bathory. Bathory. But I mean, she's just insane, right? Like her attack speed will allow her to always go first. <laughs> and then she just has so much damage through her base kit, right? It's, it's amazing what she can do. And when you pair her up with Bathory, she gets the Bite passive on both of her skills, which will allow her to do damage proportional to how much mana there is on your team. So, I mean, like I would say when Bathory and Rira are paired together, which they most of the time they always are, when that pair is together, it's actually more about Rira doing damage than it is about Bathory. Bathory is just there to kind of unleash the true potential of Rira, but yeah. I mean, she is, she's absolutely insane. I mean, I think that if you're a new player watching this video, this is probably news for you, but if you're somebody that's been playing for, you know, the past couple months or so, then this will come as no surprise. Like, FC Rira's definitely number one. She's just an incredible hero. But if we just dial it back a little bit and talk about just base Rira for a second, right? I think even base Rira is really unique in that among faded heroes, she just can do so much. I mean, one of the points that you brought up earlier was how Jinai is weak in PvP because both of her abilities are AoE and they're dots. And you wish that you had a balance between single target and AoE. Rira has that, right? So she has a single target A1 um, and then AoE A2. Yep. And like you said, there's the piercing damage. Her auto attack itself, her basic attack comes with debuffs, right? So it's just, she does a little bit of everything. I think even in her base kit, and it's already strong enough, so like if you get Rira, don't hesitate to build her, because it's only a matter of time until you get her fate core, and when you do, it's just it's gonna be so worth it. We got lucky and we pulled FC yeah. Rira on the banner, and she has <laughs> you know, we were talking about how we started out with Jin, and he's he's carried us for a long time. He's carried us through most of the story. But then when we got FC Rira, you know, it was just yeah, it was it's over for Jane. <laughs> yeah, I, she she was too good, and yeah. she's been in our comp ever since because there's just too much there. There's <clears throat> utility. She's got healing for herself. She's got AOE. She's got single target. I mean, she's got the oh yeah, 
uh, the Dragon Blood passive. Right. So it's just like, what more could you ask for in a like a DPS chaos yeah. hero? But yeah, I, that's that's what we have today. So just kind of a recap. We have at the bottom three, we have Valentina, Baelish, and Jinai. Those are very similar. All three of them will rank as B. They've got their plays, but probably not going to see a lot of play in the late game. And then we have the two specialists in PvP as Jin and Baraka. Very similar heroes. We do think Baraka is a little bit more consistent than Jin and maybe offers a little bit more. And obviously S tier Rira that kind of wrap up our whole list here. But if you guys have a different thought, let us know in the comment section down below. We would love to hear your opinion and how you would rank these heroes as well. And if you're interested in other Exos hero related content, feel free to check out our other videos. We've already put out tier lists on Fated Defenders and Fated Attackers. So definitely check those out. And the Fated Support tier list will come out soon as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next episode. See you.